Uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to uh, First Minister's Question Time. I'm Phil Attridge and I'm joined as usual today with Stuart Lockett and Norrie Stewart. Um, interesting day today, a low-key start off a thought. Um, let's start off with Norrie. Well, I mean, it was all a bit more grown up, which was good. Um, but Le Mans, um, starting on the Levinson inquiry was a bit strange because they must have known that Salmon hadn't had sight of the documentation. Because mm-hmm. I would presume, as a matter of course, that if he gets it, they get it. Well, it was known who was getting it beforehand. Well, but then she, she banged on. Her first question was, when did he last complain? To, to a newspaper. To a newspaper. I mean... She must have had some packed answer ready. Well, but we he, didn't get to hear it. Well, she normally doesn't. I mean, whether she just felt that was the question she had to ask to get a statement in, I don't know. <laughs> And then he got up and said, yeah, okay, nobody's seen it yet. I quite like the Irish way of doing things. Um, but you're going to get an opportunity to sit down at the table as party leaders, party representatives, and we're going to have some normal people there, and da-da-da-da-da, and everybody can discuss it. Academics and judges, I think, was the idea. And then what did she do? She went, well, you can't possibly be allowed to make the decision because you're a pile of Murdochs. And she tried to preempt him by saying, and we don't need a list of all the party leaders elsewhere that have sat down with Murdoch. They gave her it anyway. Yeah, standing up with Gordon Brown. But it was like, I mean, she should have turned around at that point and said, that's great, we'll be able to keep you in check, Alex. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, no, but the problem is, for, no, that's yeah, but, the, but the point is, what I could gather, although we had a small break in transmission here, was that um, she, her agenda was to suggest a unionist. Well response to Levison. In other words, whatever happens in London, we're supposed to do- adopt it. Um, and didn't... Regardless of the fact that we've got different law, laws, that you, can't, you, can't, you default, can't be done for libel, you can be done for defamation, the, the whole thing it's is... It's a devolved area. And it's, and it's devolved. Um, so we have to... By make statute. Law, you know, so, I mean... And what what was weird, she, rubber stamp yeah, London What did. was also weird, as soon as she mentioned that, that idea, her backbenchers banged their desks. As soon oh, as they mentioned it was a, a, a unionist idea to have, oh, and which really, I, that was the giveaway in today's, pro, in today's FMQs, was that there seems to be an agenda to reduce the powers and the credibility of the devolved parliament and to return powers to Westminster. And that's what, at that point, when there was a notion of that, they banged their desks. But Cal- Calvin's already, t- people don't realise, we've already lost back to Westminster with the agreement of Calvin. Powers. We've already repatriated powers to the UK. Everybody, nobody's talking about this. We've already done it. Which ones? Well, the tax raising powers have been cut. That three percent. It's not so much a parcel, you know, that, 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 that phrase, a parcel of the roads. I mean, really, listen to them. That's a sorting office for the roads. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you've been able to see this. I like that one. But my you? actual comment on... It's a big letter. Four letter, letter. letter. Big four-letter word. Fresh! It's a good West... A good descriptive West Coast. I thought, yeah. Well, so, I mean, I, I, I was glad that it wasn't quite as vitriolic. It was a bit more grown up. But the content wasn't there. She still can't move. I mean... It, it, it's embarrassing that she can't she can't manipulate the situation to get to where she wants to be. She's scripted and it's not working. As for Ruth Davidson, oh. oh, I mean, okay, national health. Why does she even think she can bring it up? She doesn't know the difference between agency nursing and bank nursing. Apparently, um, this two thousand figure. I saw this during the week. The SNP seem quite confident in denying it, so there must be a way around it. I mean, I'd be surprised if there hadn't been. I think losses, it's just, it's Ruth really still is on this idea that it uh, doesn't matter whether it's true or not. If you say it long enough and often enough, much some of that will stick in the public's mind, and that's why she says what she does. But she's now taken on a serious cloak of nasty. Oh yes, yeah, a serious snide this comments. This man. Oh yes, what a, you know, what a way to... Yeah, this man. You would have thought that a, a, a strong presiding officer would reprimand them for... Because it's, it is snidey behaviour. If it was in a classroom of school kids, yeah. they'd be reprimanded for us. Yeah. Calling people a liar, calling people, talking about like, this man. You know, 
I'm not expecting them to start talking about the everybody's honourable as they do in Westminster, but there's no need to be so nasty. But, um, did, did, and then we go to Willie. Um, I don't know, the bully kind of reverted back to well, type, but he went on about this Levinson thing again. Made some crack about he sh Salmon shouldn't be making statements when he hasn't read it. Well, if Salmon's, you know, unless he's been locked in a cupboard, he's going to be looking for solutions. And he fancies the Irish one. So why can't he say that? And then, and then he gets up and says he was trying to be conciliatory whatever the word was he used. Well, he bloody wasn't. He was trying to be smart arsed And then, of course, Sam had got the opportunity. <coughs> this is what gets me to keep opening the door for him. I asked for say of it so I could make a statement to you today. Unfortunately, your government would be give me say of it. Yes. So you'll have to... And you would have had say of it too, he said, as well, if I'd have say of it. Exactly. Early. So, you know, don't give me a hard time because your lot are being petty about giving a say of legislation... Of, of, sorry, not having the opportunity to think about legislation as soon as this report's published. Why, some, would, why would they deny them access? Well, there were a couple of heavyweights and a lot of questions. I think Neil Finley's turning Labour fellow is turning into be a, out to be a quite a, a heavyweight backbencher uh, on the kind of left this the leftish wing mm. of the current Labour Party. Well, this is the Livingston guy. Livingston yeah. fellow. And it is, a, it is a topic that, that it's a real topic. It's about the staffing of the children's ward at St John's Hospital at Livingston and how it, they ran out of staff. They had to close the ward. The, prime, the First Minister did promise that it wouldn't, that it would be it would reopened. And it's been almost closed again. They, 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 you know, they, there are real issues at that. At well, the, uh, it's about complaint. recruiting, recruiting uh, paediatric specialists. I mean, and um, but it, it does seem to have returned. So it's a, that's embarrassing. Well, it, it didn't. Uh, it, as far as I understand, it didn't actually shut. There was a possibility that they wouldn't be able to do twenty-four-seven cover, but it hasn't come to that. But the, the, I'm not quite. I think that the, the, the related to the. They announced this morning, shock horror, that some consultants were getting what a thousand pounds for a, a shift to be on standby to cover this shortage at Livingston. Well, I'm sorry, um, that's not nearly enough money for a consultant to be on standby. They're only on 120 thousand a year for crying out loud. Yeah, I mean, they are, that's NHS wages. You know, that's ten thousand a month. So but that's a yeah, shift. They, 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 that's what they get for NHS. But they can get any private. That, They'll be taken on not as NHS staff to stand by, they'll be taken on as private staff to stand mm. by. Because consultants are allowed to work both for the NHS and for themselves. Yeah, so that was the golden deal or something that Benning yeah. called it, you know, when he got them in because it's they just wanted to keep making money out of it. Because it'll be, it'll be a 24 hour standby. Yeah. It'll be a 40 pound, well, it'll be less than that. It'll be 35, 40 mm. pound an hour. Oh, that's reasonable. Which is not in the scheme of things. I mean, I know brickies that were getting 25, 30 quid an hour. You know, so when you take it down to that level, suddenly it doesn't look quite as. If you make figures. Well, let me say, no. try something up what I saw, which I don't disagree much with what you've said there, Noria. I would say Alex set out to be diplomatic, I think, and he stayed diplomatic from start to finish. He was still smart on his brief and had some very good answers. His opening statement about Levison explaining that he was looking for cross-party support and outlining what he had in mind was completely diplomatic. You know, I, I, I think he punctured uh, Joanne's balloon. She, Joanne found it difficult to progress after he made his statement about Levison because I think it made it... I think that's why she sounded as she was floundering because she, she was kind of lost after that. Um, Ruth, yes, what did she do? Just got her digging about the Ryder Cup and you had to be in the know to know about that. Well, not good on that route. And Willie, Willie was a little unfortunate. He had to wait until two or three backbench questions were read out, so he wasn't, wasn't quite on the button. And, as you said, Nori, he kind of lost it a bit about... His, he invited the attack from, the response from um, Alex about um, Westminster not giving Scotland a, a sight of this report. 
But, I mean, I mean, it was it was the comment. I mean, he got up. He basically said, "Well, yeah, thanks. We'd like to sit around the table too, but why are you making a statement about this without having?" No, they wanted a statement. No, no. What what he said was, "Why are you making?" He inferred that Sam had made a statement in reference to his idea that this Irish model, the model the would, the looked quite good, but. Salmon, I, I, I think Salmon kind of got the boot in a bit, a bit too soon there. Um, but it was, it was without real meat, you know. I'll, I'll give. I mean, what I will say about Joanne, I, I believe that she is nervous, and the way she covers that is with anger because her hand was shaken again today. So I think she finds it much easier to be aggressive than to be that man. Well, when, when Joanne did start off, quite low-key, sounding quite sensible, and I just knew something was coming in, because it's... Uh, and then it was a look on Alex Sam's face, the it's eyes rolled that. back, and he <laughs> thought, like, it was like that... Yes, he was looking at the God, ceiling. God, God save us, here we go again. You know, you know what the is the point? point? So she asked him a pretty straightforward question, and... Everything Salmon said, we already know, because it was talked about last night on Newsnight, yeah. or during the week, that's always been his preferred, which is the you Irish, basically, you know, Leveson, basically, plant tree that you walk it through, but it's underpinned by statute. So basically, you're, 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 you're forced through it. Um, and, and this whole idea of this Britishness, this Britishness, and you, I'm sorry, it's divulged, you doesn't even know the powers, or appears to know, or is ignoring the powers that she has if she ever becomes first minister. And, sorry, and most of the problems emanate from English-owned, English-produced press that come, come up here. Ruth Davison, this man, eight Ryder Cups. I mean, she used to be quite jolly. I mean, she's just a, yeah, but then again, suppose, it's well, it's a given, it's a story. They are nasty. They can't but it be, was but, nasty. But anything else, yes, just... And it's sneery the whole way. And the way she talks about things where they're actually sort of slicing away most of it. Um, but anyway, let's, let's, let's see some scores this week. This should be interesting. Um, you're going to... Let's keep well, on. Keep on writing them down. Um, yes, Shall I start? Oh, let's start at the bottom. Let's start with Ruth. We've been giving Ruth <laughs> nothing. Right, so... We've that's been... It. Ruth... No, well, he's he still going to go... I've been giving Ruth the zero the last couple of weeks. I cannot see any improvement. Um, it was snidey. Uh, her language, this man. I'm going to go into negative one. Oh, minus one. I'm sorry, I can't. She's not getting any better. She's getting worse. Willie, he seemed... He was a put out by... Uh, he was definitely put out by Alex Hammond's statement about Levinson. And really didn't really didn't prepare a proper question and therefore I'm giving him about three this week. Oh! Mm, Joanne, um, I think she actually failed this week. She reached a bit, a bit of a peak last week and I think I gave her about seven. We'll give her a five. Alex, I think that, I think that he really played a blinder this week to be honest. He, he decided to be generous, to be diplomatic, to be statesmanlike. And he kind of was about 95% of the time. I'll give him a nine. Yeah, well, it's 95. That's fine. That's not too bad, yeah. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to take a slightly different tack this week. I'm going to score it like a classroom. Right. So we'll start with Ruth, who is obviously in the in-group within her school year. You know, everybody knows she's quite smart and all the rest of it. But she's nasty. Mm. She's the one that'll talk behind your back while smiling at your face. She's, mm. she's got that nasty, catty thing about her. So I'm going to give her a zero instead of a minus because, you know, it is important if we're losing nurses in the NHS, we should be talking about oh, it. Mm -hmm. We should know about it. I don't trust her figures. I think she's a liar. So I'm not going to believe... Proven liar. Well, I'm not going to believe that there's 2,000 nurses less than there should be. So, you know... But it's, it's, it should be brought up if we're losing staff at that level in the NHS. Um, Joanne. Joanne's that one, you know, where she's really quite a good hockey player. Um, she's not that bonny, not that popular with the boys, but quite a lot of people like her because, you know, she, she's, she's solid. You can trust her. But 
she gets a bee in her bonnet. She'll not let it go. She's like a double well bone. And unfortunately, she can't think on her feet. She's all right if you know you want her to recite something in the classroom. She can do it. You want her a bit of original thought. Can you do it? And she's nervous, which some people think is quite sweet, but not in a leader of the Labour Party. It's not. Well, so first I'm going to give her a four because at least she wasn't screaming and shouting and tearing people's hair out. <laughs> uh, Willie Rennie. Willie. Willie's the guy that sits at sort of the middle of the class. He's not a bad boy. He's not a good boy. He's a bit of a drink. He's not quite a geek because he's not smart enough. Uh, he's definitely not playing first 15 rugby because he's not fit enough. He's not hard enough. He's a bit of ball. Um, a two because he just got everything wrong. He started with a conciliatory <laughs> thing, turned it into a bit of a sneer, and it didn't work either way. He fell between two stools. So, nah, waste of space. Alex, I thought, was very good. I did think, as you mentioned, he gave the game away when he offered the round table uh, all party discussions and as soon as he sat down, Lamont attacked him and, and, and as you say, you could just see him going, oh my God, what? Oh, he was looking up at the ceiling. Well, you could almost hear him saying, I tell you what, I'm just going to give them control of Hollywood. <laughs> you know, because obviously it doesn't matter how much they get to participate, they're going to be arseholes about it. But, probably because she was better behaved, I'm going to give her a six this week. Uh, no, no, Alex. Uh, sorry, Alex, I'm on about. Uh, Joanne jumped in there. Alex, I'm going to give Alex a nine as well. No. Yeah, you gave Joanne four. Which, you know. There you go. Do you want to change it? You can? No, no, no I mean, you no. didn't say she was better behaved. No, Maybe then. As, I, as I said, six, I thought, no, I've got a better handshake. Right, no, yeah, 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 no. But I'll... Get I'll start at the end with Ruth. I'll be consistent. Um, I'm sorry. She shouldn't be there. She's only there because of this stupid PR anyway. So there we go. Consistent zero. Right. <laughs> Willie. Uh, uh, well, I mean, so, do you not feel sorry for him? You know, I mean, you can see that we bottom lip trembling. You know, please take me seriously. Please take me seriously. Uh, and he only sits in the middle of the classroom, right, because people feel sorry for him. He should really be away over in the corner with a funny conical hat on. So, so I'll give him one. Just for coming along, just for being on time. Joanne, um, well, she did start off well, but it was, I mean, really, you know, I mean, living in a glass house, you know, throwing stones, you know, when you start talking about murder, when you think of Blair and, and all the other ones, so far Gordon on. Brown. Oh, Gordon Brown, yeah. I mean, pyjama parties with their wife, and uh, I mean, the Labour Party was so far up Murdoch's rear end, you know, every time he opened his mouth, one of them popped out, you know, so. Um, Why do grown-ups have pyjama parties? Because, well, yeah, I know, I know. Why do grown-ups have pyjama parties?